Hello, we got Jake and Matthew here today with proper way to PM preventative maintenance or perform a tune up on a heat pump. All right, so as always, you need to lay out the tools you'll be using for your job today. We have a few things here some jumpers to make the unit run while we do this, uh, some zip ties. I'll explain this a little bit more as we go along. Um, a thermometer so you can take some readings, your multimeter, obviously. Um, and then, you know the drill, some needle nose, 10 in 1, uh, your impact, you're going to need a hose, and if you see somebody doing a PM without a hose, I can tell you they're not doing it right. Again, we'll get into this a little bit more later. And then our gauges. Now, we probably won't use these today, but we have them just in case. When we get to that point, I'll explain that as well. All right, so we're going to start today by doing some of just your basic readings, amp draws, testing the cap, things like that. Uh, whenever you start doing PMs or working on any unit, first thing you're always going to want to do is kill the power. This way as you open panels and start messing around inside the unit, you're not going to shock yourself or short anything to ground. So with the power off, we're just going to take out the panel, uh, the control side panel. This is going to be where all of the electrical components for your unit are. And this is one of the things that's very important that you turn the power off for. Because behind here is where all the high and low voltage is. And if you're bumping things or messing around as you take this off, like I said, you can shock yourself or you can short the unit. And that will cause a whole lot more problems. All right, since we got the unit open and the power is off, there's a few things we're going to want to check. We're going to start by checking the capacitor to make sure it's operating within its uh, set range. We're going to check the contactor to make sure that the lugs are tight, that there's no discoloration or bad connections. So that'll be a sign that the, that the contactor is going out. One of the things we like to do while doing PMs is go through and tighten up all these wires. This is why I told you to grab some zip ties before you start because we can zip tie these tires, these wires out of the way and make it a lot easier for us to work. It'll also make it look a lot cleaner for the next tech that comes through. All right. Now that we've tested all our connections inside, made sure our contactor was in proper working order, no discoloration, we zip tied down all the wires so everything's nice and neat inside. Now I'm going to test the capacitor for the outdoor fan. Now this is a rated a 5 microfarad capacitor and it's plus or minus 5%. So whenever I test something like this, you just want to make sure that it's well within that operating range. So you just put one to each side, obviously with the wires disconnected. We call this tabletop testing. And you want to just look at the meter. As long as it's plus or minus 5%, we are good. And since this is nearly 5, it looks like this cap is perfect. All right, now that we've tested the cap, I put it back inside the system. I got the unit jumpered, so when I turn it on, it'll come into cooling right away. Now we're going to take amp draws on both the indoor motor, the outdoor motor, and the compressor to make sure that they are also operating within uh, their proper par parameters. All right, so we're going to start up our unit and take our amp reading. Now we're going to take a reading on the outdoor fan motor, the indoor fan motor, and the compressor. Now you always want to look at the nameplate on the compressor or the motor itself because you never know when it was changed out, if it was changed out, and it might not match the nameplate on the side of the unit. So I've already checked all three components we're going to be testing, and I'm just going to show you what we need to do is just make sure that it's in the proper range. So we'll start with the outdoor fan motor. Right here at the relay, we got a reading looks like it's, uh, we'll say 1.1, 1.2 inches. Now we'll go to the indoor motor. And that looks pretty good as well. 2.3, 2.4, not too bad. As far as the contact or the compressor goes, take that reading right here. We'll do the yellow right here. Now it looks like a 5.9 on the compressor. Now, like I said, I took these numbers down before I started, 
and it looks like the compressor is rated for 9 amps, so it's well within tolerable range. The outdoor, the indoor fan motor was 2.2, so that's sitting right at where it's supposed to be. But it looks like the outdoor fan motor might actually be amping a little bit high. It's rated at 0.8 amps, and we're looking right now anywhere from 0.8 to 1. So that's definitely something we're going to want to look into at a further date. Alright, so before we kill the power and start the next step in our uh, PM process, uh, we'd like to take a split. This is what I do right here at the supply. We'll take, um, we'll take the split. You're looking for about 55 degrees or so. Uh, really what you're looking for in a split is uh, 20 degrees between the return air and the supply air. Now, the reason we take a split with a thermometer is to get an idea of how the unit's performing. If these numbers end up being way off, that's what the gauges are for. We'll hook up and make sure that the refrigerant charge is, is correct. So here's what you're looking for as far as the return temperature goes. We're sitting right at about 74, 75 degrees. It's just about perfect. All right, now with the unit off, we're gonna start cleaning the indoor and outdoor coils. Now, we just take a regular garden hose here with a special nozzle right on the end. Get a nice, strong beam going. And just start at the top and work your way down very slowly. You can look inside and see the coil, and I would just do it one coil at a time until you get all the way through from top to bottom. Now we did this within the last few months, and you can already see how much dirt and stuff is coming off just from the last few months. All right, so I took the top off the unit uh, just to make it a little easier to show you what we're going to be doing. This isn't something you would normally see because you can do all this with the top still on. Like I said, just for the sake of convenience and ease of showing you, I popped the top off. Now we're going to clean the indoor coil. This is something that very rarely gets done and is something you want to be very careful when you do. You may notice that same hose, everything, I just have it pinched. So when I let go, I can get instant water without having to twist it up and down. And you want to go very slowly because the pan in here can only handle so much water at one time. And you're going to want to do the same thing again, very slowly, start at the top, come all the way across and just work your way down, making extra sure that you're not overfilling the drain pan in there because then you're going to start leaking inside the house or inside the unit and those are just problems that you do not want to deal with. And then it just again, follow each coil one at a time all the way down without putting too much pressure in there so you don't get any water inside the ductwork. Since I got the top off, there's something else I can show you very easy too. If you look right here, you can see where the wires were rubbing against the pipe. Now this is one of the things I was talking about earlier, where you want to make sure that you tie all your wires up so they're not hanging or rubbing against things, because after too much time, this can actually rub through the sheathing on the wire and cause a short inside your unit. Alright, now that we've got everything cleaned and buttoned back up, I'm going to turn the unit back on. Now, as you may have noticed, I brought my gauges up, but I didn't use them, and this is the reason why. I took the split, the split was almost dead on. 20, 18 to 20 degrees, we were right in that range. Uh, with the way everything was amping, the unit was running fine, I felt it wasn't needed. Now, some techs might tell you, gauge up every time just to make sure, but um, an AC is a closed system. Every time you put your gauges on it, no matter how careful you are, you're going to lose some refrigerant. You come out and do PMs or tune-ups once, twice a year in a unit every year. After a few years, you're going to be a pound or two short of refrigerant. That can cause all kinds of other problems uh, on top of it just not running efficiently. So if I don't need to, I'm not going to gauge up just for that reason. So thank you very much. You guys have a wonderful day.